you. You know, last week we were in chapter 14. We talked about Peter walking on the water a little bit. We dealt with, uh, I forget the name of it right now. It's funny, if I can forget a sermon in a week, you know you've already done it in two days. So that's why you need to take notes. You need to try to find something in this you can grab and get hold of. Amen. My grandson, the name of the message this morning uh, is persistence breaks resistance. Persistence breaks resistance. Every child knows this, that if they stay persistent with you, you will eventually give in. My grandson is 13, and ever since he was a two-year-old, he has been very persistent. When he knows that I'm coming to visit him in Colorado, he I, I try not to even let him know I'm coming because he'll start calling when I'm about 50 miles outside of Houston. And for 800 miles, all I'll hear is phone ringing and ringing. And he'll try to get me to come and get him to bring him to a hotel. So wherever I'm at, if I get it there at 2 in the morning, he don't care. He has no sympathy toward me. He has persistence. And, he, and I will give in. I actually will give in because he just keeps going. And so there may be resistance there, but even if there's resistance, he is persistent. And I see it all through Scripture. You know, I, I understand when pain or hardship bites, when the majority is tired, irritable, persistent, is resilient. resilient. And we dealt with resilience. That was the word we dealt with last week, being able to bounce back. Reliable and faithful. Not stubborn, but stable. Persistence, what characterizes those who are habitually successful in sports or sales or some skills is persistence. It's just staying with it. What single quality in a business builds respect deeper than any other is persistence. What's needed most by parents in a home? Persistence. What makes a church alive, worth the drive? It's persistence, and that's what has happened over uh, 20-something years of the little country church. We've just been persistent. we just stayed on it, stayed at it. We've used folding chairs. We've used whatever building we had, uh, you know, wherever we could. We've been in funeral homes preaching for two years. We've been in a camp for 21 years. We've been here in this building since, uh, well, when did we move in here? You have to go look at the, the bench outside. 2012, amen. So we've been very persistent. We've not stopped. We kept pressing. And if you want to see this city changed, you've got to stay persistent. Can I get an amen? You can't back off. You've got to keep pressing. I've seen churches come and churches go. I've seen businesses come and go, amen. It, and it's amazing. If, but if you're persistent and you stay with it, what will add more weight to your witness for Christ than anything else? It's your persistence that you've just stayed with it. Persistence, it's a mark of maturity. It's hanging in there day and night regardless. It, it knows little of ups and downs, highs or lows, blue Mondays or holiday hangovers. When I read scripture, I see biblical persistence. Second Timothy 4, 2, Paul told Timothy, preach the word. Preach the word. Whether I feel like it or not, preach the word. Whether I've attained it or not, preach the word. Deliver his word to his people. Be persistent with it. Be prepared in season and out of season. It's not just always on Sunday or a midweek service. You've got to stay with it. You've got to keep pressing on into it. Amen. He said, correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. When encouraging the Galatians, Paul said in Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Understand the principle of time. Timing is everything. You, you know, sometimes we give in, we give up too quick. We pray and say, it didn't happen. Or we, or we bought into some uh, faith theology that told us that we only have to pray one time and, and that's it. God heard me. Uh-uh. I believe in persistence. I believe in staying at it. I believe in praying and believing God. So he said, in due time, when it's the right season, amen, you're going to get an answer from there. James saw persistence as a stabilizing trait, which he called endurance. James 1, 3 says, and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may May be perfect or mature and complete, lacking nothing. Abraham was persistent when it came to believing. Amen. The scripture said in Romans 4:20, he did not waver. Best of all, Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is always persistent. Amen. He's always moving forward. One of the most magnetic characteristics of Christ and his persistence is when you need him, he's there. He's even there when you don't think you need him, and he's never too late and he's never too early. Persistence breaks resistance. Now, persistence, a definition, means giving it your best shot 
and not giving up on something until you achieve the desired result. It means making adjustments, pushing through. When you make big and small mistakes and facing everything the world throws at you until you attain your dreams and goals. We'll say it again. It means making adjustments, pushing through. When you make big and small mistakes and facing everything the world throws at you until you attain your dreams and goals. Staying persistent. Everybody say persistent. Now, if you've got something that's resistant against you, you've got to stay persistent. In the Scripture, in Matthew, and I just want to pick one passage. I, I can go through several groups of people that have done this, but in Matthew 15, verse 21, the Scripture says, Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him. She cried, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. If you've got a child that's demon-possessed, don't raise your hand. She brought much disturbance. She loved her daughter. I can't say enough about parental love. As a father, a grandpa, as moms, grandmas, guardians, to love a child, it'll break your heart. When they're little, it's so easy. But there comes a day when they hit the teens and a uh, young adult and you're still a parent or grandparent, it breaks your heart. But like her, she chose not to give up. And she pressed in and she said, Son of David, my daughter's demon-possessed. And let me tell you, she's suffering. Not only has it bothered me, but she's suffering. And Jesus didn't answer her a word. Silence. Quiet. Didn't say nothing to her. She's a Gentile. You know, there's Jews and Gentiles. Gentile. Heathen. Don't serve God. She don't serve the God of, of Israel. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. In other words, she was persistent. She didn't, she didn't back off. She kept pressing. Now she's bothering them, the associates. She's after the associates now. Pastor, you won't listen. Maybe Pastor Joseph and Joshua listen. So she started bothering them. And we'll throw Jerome in there since he's sitting there. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. It's not right to take the word and give it to dogs. Oh, my goodness. So first he's silent, ain't saying a word to her. And now he used the term, did he just call her a dog? I believe he did. Well, pastor, you better explain yourself. Well, let's do it. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted and your daughter is healed this very moment. In other words, your persistence got your daughter healed. Right now, you ain't even got to go home. The word has already gone over and taken that demon away from your daughter. She's fine right now. The Message Bible, I love what it says. It says from there, Jesus took a trip to Tyre and Sidon. It's not on the overhead, Kim. It's okay. They, they had hardly arrived when a Canaanite woman came down from the hills and pleaded mercy. Master, have son, son of David. My daughter is cruelly afflicted by an evil spirit. Jesus ignored her. The disciples came and complained. Now she's bothering us. Will you please take care of her? She's driving us crazy. Jesus refused, telling them, I've got my hands full dealing with the lost sheep of Israel. Then the woman came back to Jesus, dropped to her knees and begged, Master, help me. He said, it's not right to take bread out of the children's mouths and throw it to the dogs. She was quick. You're right, Master, but... But beggar dogs do get scraps from the master's table. Jesus gave in. Oh, woman, I love this. Oh, woman, your faith is something else. What you want is what you get. Right then, her daughter became well. It's a simple story here of a woman who couldn't care less about politics, but only cared about her daughter, only cared about her child. Amen. And her story reminds us that faith and prayer and love looks like when Jesus shows up. Now, Scripture is the headline. This, these, this is the headline, the Bible. 
So if I was to say, what's the headline here? The headline would be, an unnamed Canaanite woman is described by Jesus as having great faith. Matthew chapter 15. Now, if I flip back to Matthew chapter 14, I find another little footnote. And the footnote would read like this. Just last week, the leader of the disciples, Peter, was told that he had very little faith. This week, an anonymous woman who is not even Jewish is told that she has great faith. Are you catching what's going on here? Peter walks on water, sinks, cries out, Lord, help me. Jesus walks with him back to the boat to get in the boat. Jesus looks at him and said, ye have little faith. Now we find a heathen woman, a woman that don't even know the God of Israel that has great faith. And Jesus said to her, you got great faith. Are you hearing me? In other words, there are people out there that don't even know God that may have more faith than those sitting in here. It's a rebuke to us. Can I get an amen? amen. See, great faith requires a great need. She had a great need. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This woman is desperate. Her daughter is being tormented by a devil, and she will do anything for her daughter, even turn to a Jew. If I got to go to this doctor. Some of you have gone to doctors before and looked at him and thought, hold on, you ain't from America. Hello? Come on. You'll go to a convenience store. Where, one, where somebody's there that, that may be not an American and, and, and get you gas. But all of a sudden you see a doctor and you say, hold on, you don't look like us. Where are you from? Hello. Don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. So she has a need and she don't care. She evidently has heard about Jesus. She presses into him and begins to talk to him. She's desperate. Everybody say desperate. See, that's what persistence does. And even turning that she's going to humble herself, she will embarrass herself. Even embarrass herself. She will do whatever it takes because her need is that great. Great faith requires knowing who is going to fill that need. See, the truth is we all got a hole inside of us. We all got a need inside of us, just like this woman did. And she didn't know how to fill it. She couldn't fill it with, 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 with stuff or people. She doesn't mention a father, a husband. She goes straight to Jesus at this moment, this Canaanite woman with this faith, not just because she's desperate for help, but because she comes to realize that her help can only come from Christ. Great faith means recognizing our great need, turning to a, a great Savior. Great faith requires persistent trust. I got to persistently trust in Him. Amen. Through school, I got to trust in Him. College, I got to trust in Him. Through work, I got to trust. As I move toward the end of my life, I've got to trust Him. Amen. Did you notice that when this woman first turns to Christ, He ignored her? He paid her no mind. He did. He, if she's asking him a question, Lord, come and take care of my daughter. She's demon possessed and she's suffering terribly. He ignored her. You ever felt like your prayers were ignored? You can shake your head. God didn't hear you. Amen. I mean, you prayed. Amen. You have felt this way. I know I have at times. Sometimes the only answer we seem to hear is silence. And that makes, us, makes it seem like God is absent from us. And that, that, that tests us, that challenges our faith. God, God, uh, David in the Old Testament, in the book of Psalms, all through it, he asked, where's God? There are times he prayed, he felt like his prayers didn't make it. This Canaanite woman, she's got faith. And according to Jesus, we see it in her response. Even when he's silent, when Jesus responds to her request with silence, she responds to his silence with faith. Listen, you may not be listening to me. But I'm, I'm still believing. I'm still hanging on. I've got a child. It ain't about me. It's about my girl. It's about my son. I'm praying for them right now. She had no give up in her. She does not turn from Jesus. She doesn't turn from Jesus. Instead, she turned toward his disciples. And she starts pestering them, messing with them. Great faith does not give up. It persists, even when there seems to be little reason to do so. Great faith does not require our worthiness. She ain't worthy. She not, she's not Jewish. Hello? She doesn't know the God of Israel. She's a Canaanite woman. She's a part of the Ite group. Remember the Ite group? The Perizzites? Canaanites? The Gergesites? All them that were supposed to be driven out of the land? She's a part of the Ites. And she knows it. She's born that way. Did you know you didn't get permission to be born where you're at? And who you are? And the color of your skin? And the culture you came in, you didn't get permission for that. God just chose it. You ought to just thank God no matter where you, however you got here. Can you get an amen? 
Great faith, as this woman shows us, requires a need. Trust in Jesus. Amen. Jesus gives her an answer she doesn't want to hear. He said, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, she worshiped what would be considered, I will say this, the wrong God, a little G. And Jesus' mission was not yet for people like her. But she was going to say, you may not have chosen me yet. You may not have chosen my group yet. You may not have sent Paul to the Gentiles yet, but I don't care. I'm going to make you pick me. Hello. You're going to pick me. I'm going to be persistent here with this moment. You know, who are we to even dare to ask for help? Do you remember your life before? Do you remember what you've done? I have. I look back over my life and I say, God, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to have what you've blessed me with, all the things you've done in my life, all the family that I love, all the friends that I have, all the funerals I presided over. They were my friends. They were my family. Amen. You've blessed me for actually 40-something years. As soon as I got saved, God started setting me on a place of favor. He constantly favored me. If I took you back where I came from and showed you where I you'd say, my goodness, Pastor, you've done well. Hello. I can boast about me. You don't have to. I'm big enough to talk about me. I've heard you talk about you. So what the Canaanite woman teaches us is our worthiness has nothing to do with us. Amen. Uh, she's not worthy. We're not worthy. Amen. But it doesn't matter. Great faith doesn't require us to be worthy because great faith turns us to the only one who can make us worthy. Great faith turns us to the one who died for us. Amen. It's because what he did for me that I have faith in him. You see, by telling the Canaanite one, woman that she's not worthy and then answering her prayer answering her prayer jesus is telling us that it is not about our worthiness it never was it's about his grace amen the simple gift of god's love given to all of us by god's son great faith doesn't rely on our worthiness but it's also not stopped by our unworthiness because faith relies on god nothing more nothing less you realize when you read about abraham Abraham was a mess, and yet he was a friend of God. You read about David, he was a mess, but he had a heart after God. I read through Scripture, and I realize, God, it was your grace that did this in our life. Amen. Wrap us up in your grace. Amen, because that's what I need more than anything else. When I read about this woman, I realize she was humble, she was persistent, she was emotionally intelligent, and she was trusting. What we learn from her is simply this. People don't always understand what you're going through. People don't always understand. They don't understand why you begging, why you praying, why you believing, why you keep bringing up the fact, I'm praying for my daughter, I'm praying for my, I'm believing for her. The disciples were annoyed with her persistence. It bothered them. Listen, there are people that have been very persistent in my life. I know that. At times, they've been quite annoying. And I will give in to a lot of them when I realize that it's faith. Some, is not, it has nothing to do with faith. It's attention. They just want attention. And they just ask your attention all the time. But faith says that when I get my need met, I'll leave you alone. I'll walk away. Mm -hmm. So the disciples, they were annoyed. The next one, what I learned here, Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and they said, Could you make her leave? For she keeps crying out after us. But God is never oblivious to our situation. The disciples asked Jesus to send her away. Maybe they too felt that she was not entitled to a miracle. They seen Jesus do miracle after miracle, and they knew if they kept, he, she keeps pestering, it may happen. Her faith, the faith of this Canaanite woman, was fueled by the burden she felt as a mother. When you are a parent, when you love somebody, it, it doesn't have to be. And I went to the hospital this week to pray over Cameron, who we prayed for last week. It's going to be persistent faith that's going to see that young man rise up out of leukemia. You got to be persistent. My friend Rick, amen, also going through it. I, I got people in this church that I know that have secretly told me they're dealing with certain things in their life. It's persistent faith, believing, asking God, amen, holding on to him, believing that in the name of Jesus, I ain't giving up until you give me what I'm after, amen, to stay after him. The, her faith, amen, I, I love this woman, amen, just a thought. The disciples could not relate to her. You know why? I can't find anywhere in Scripture, and I know you guys are theologians. You've got a bachelor's, you've got a master's, you've got a wife. <laughs> I cannot find where any of the disciples had children. And when you don't have kids, now listen, just because you don't have kids don't mean you don't want kids, right? 
I went, I went a long time without children before I got kids. And God just started pouring them on me. He ain't quit. But another side was that kids. Hmm. Kind of remind me of the politicians I'm seeing on the news today. They don't care about kids. We'll just kill them, board them, get rid of them. Hmm. Ain't got kids. So maybe they didn't relate to her. Maybe they didn't understand her. Think of how they dismissed the children who came to sit on Jesus' lap. They came to sit on there. They said, get those kids away from Jesus. Jesus said, let them come unto me. Let them come hang out with me. He said, let them be with me. Love poured out of her heart. The disciples couldn't appreciate it. In life, people do not always understand the burden you might be feeling over a particular situation or a child. A mother who reached out to me just this week, she call, uh, called me and said, Pastor, my daughter has gone back on drugs. And her child has been released into the custody of uh, CPS. And, uh, I think that's what it's called. And she said, I, I don't know what to do. Would you pray? Persistent. I know this mother, I know her daughter. Her daughter should have died years ago in a car wreck, but God spared her. So it's that, it's that passion in your heart that you're crying out because you, you, yet you're with sin, and you don't know what else to do. But this woman, the same way. She came, she knelt down, and God will meet you where you are, and then he'll cause your faith to grow. When she approached Jesus, she called him son of David. Son of David. She probably saw Jesus as like a magician, or, uh, but not the miracle-working God. The Canaanite woman was said to be Greek. She did not hold the same religious beliefs. And yet all in Scripture, the woman is one of the two people, only two people in the Bible did Jesus say had great faith. Did you know they were both Gentiles? None of them were the disciples. Both were Gentiles. One was her, and another one was a soldier that said, Speak your word. I'm a man under authority. Say your word. And, and, and my, uh, it was a soldier he was after will be healed. And Jesus spoke the word. He said, That man got great faith. Amen. He's got faith. Amen. There's something about that. Yet their faith exceeded that of the Jews who looked down on the Gentiles. What the Jews took for granted, the Canaanite woman did not. That's a word for us. Amen. Sometimes we have taken for granted our prayer life, fasting, believing. Amen. The love we have for God, the, the word of God that we know and we understand. Initially, she called him son of David. By the end of the story of the conversation, she calls him Lord. Isn't that funny how life goes? When you first got born again, you needed a Savior. But you serve him long enough, all of a sudden he becomes Lord. Amen. He's Lord of all. Jesus begins to talk with her, and he helps her to see as more than, than just a magician. Amen. He showed her he was God. God will sometimes test your courage and your faith. Another lesson here that you've got to learn is this woman. Amen. God will sometimes throw you a curve. I mean, he, he was quiet. He didn't answer it. The way I wanted it, Jesus tried to discourage the faith of the Canaanite woman. He, he had the most confusing response to her request. Amen. Jesus calls her a dog. You know, I got a new dog. Just showed up. Somebody dropped the little feller off. He's 10 pounds of pure muscle and excitement. Amen. He's, I already got two stray dogs. And then one dog that's, that's a big dog. He's 135 pounds of pure, I will eat you up. But this little feller showed up, and I thought, oh, God. And I asked y'all, take him. Please take this dog. Just like I did the others. Please take this dog. And all of you are bark chicken. So the dog rides with me on the tractor. He gets on the... He, I was mowing grass last Monday. He followed beside me, and I'm blowing... He's so small, I'm blowing grass out. It's hitting him, and he's rolling. <laughs> he's chasing me. I, I, in anxiety, I shut the mower off and took him back to the house for, for concern he was going to get under the blade. He doesn't know any better. He, he's just excited. And he comes and he sits underneath me, and, and I eat. And after I eat, stuff gets caught up in my whiskers. Amen. And he watches and he waits until I finish eating. And then all of a sudden, he crawls up on me in this most innocent look. And all of a sudden, he starts licking my whiskers. And I'm thinking, that's the sweetest dog in the world. No, he just likes chocolate. He's just 10 pounds of pure pleasure. He, I just, you can't, he rolls over on his back. He sleeps. He, so, uh, he barks. He growls at the other dog. He thinks, I said, dog, if you were as big as Coda, you'd be the meanest dog I know. He's <laughs> Jesus called her a dog. Now, but I want you to hear me. 
I looked the difference up. When the Jews called the Gentiles dogs, they called the Samaritans dogs. When they called them dogs, they meant untrained, disobedient, scavengers of, of, of uh, uh, what do you call those, uh, uh, the, of the, the, the pits where they throw trash, of the trash pits. That's what the that Samaritans are. They're dogs. But when Jesus used the word dog to her, he, the dog, the word was pet. Pet dog. Oh, he didn't call me scavenger. He called me pet. There's a difference here. Amen. And then so she says, quick-witted. She's a quick-witted woman. Amen. And she says, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. In other words, just throw me a crumb, Jesus. Amen. I'll take whatever you got. I'll, I'll use that. One of the most characteristics that allowed her to access her blessing was that she had the maturity of her emotions. <sighs> Church, sometimes our emotions get the best of us. We get, we see something on, be careful what you see on social media. It's not all true. People, they post stuff and they, 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 they put different people's faces on things and, and they try to get you aggravated and you'll all of a sudden think it's the truth. Amen. That's why I say this book is the headlines. Amen. It, it's not what I read in the newspaper. It's what the book says. That's why I told you I believe in climate change because this book taught me about climate change. It changed during Noah. It changed during Elijah. I watched the show this week about Pompeii. It's always been it's never. It's always going to change. So that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the, in the book. So I, I, I don't read, listen to what they say. What this say? Amen. So I'm going I'm to do what the book says. So this woman, she says, even the dogs get the crumbs. I, I'll, I'll take a crumb. Yeah, and Jesus recognized the tone of voice. And I'm going to close with this. It, it, it may be facial expression. And she knew exactly what he was trying to accomplish. God responds to persistent prayers of faith. You get persistent. You stay at it. Some of you, you prayed and you quit and you got mad at God. You, I, I'm a persistent tither. I am a persistent faster. I, I uh, faster. I, I'm not fast. I do without food at times, but I'm not fast. Uh, but but persistent. I'm like the the, the turtle. <laughs> I just stay at it. I stay at it. I I marvel at drops of water that fall on rock. That constantly falls on rock until it's made a groove. I marvel at grass that grows through the cracks outside this building that needs weed killer on it. That grows up through the cracks. I marvel at persistent. I marvel how persistent grass grows. I mean, so fast. I marvel at how the earth keeps pressing in on us if we don't take dominion over it and push it back. It's persistent. It doesn't stop. The seasons keep coming. The seasons keep going. This Canaanite woman believed Jesus could heal her daughter without any physical contact. Do you mean he didn't have to go and touch her? No, he didn't. The book of Psalms says he sent his word and healed. Sent his word. Sent his word and healed them. This woman believed that he could send his word. This woman, having not been raised Jewish, believed Jesus' words alone. She believed in his power to say the word and the miracle would be done. She didn't stop asking. She bothered the disciples and they had to witness a miracle. They had to witness the fact that what they had been calling dogs, Jesus called her a pet. Amen. She knew even the dog get the crumbs. You may be, it may be later you want us Canaanites to get saved, but I want to serve you now. I look what was going on on the news, and I'm saying to the Lord, God, they folk won't need you soon. They're going to need you, Jesus. When it seemed like Jesus was trying to insult her, she moved in even closer. She knelt before him, and Jesus honored her persistent prayer of faith. Let me give you some final words. When you persistently pray and fast, 
You ain't got to wait till January to fast. You ain't got to wait till Tuesday night to pray. You can pray today. You can keep believing God for you. Amen. It brings you to a place where God moves powerfully in your life. The mother's daughter received her healing when she persistently pursued Jesus. When you persistently pray and fast, it causes God to feel your need. Just as he felt the touch of the woman who needed healing. Do you remember the woman with the issue of blood? She came in through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment. She'd had doctor after uh, Mark chapter 4. Doctor after doctor after doctor. It was never the less better. But she was persistent. Now, okay, I've been to the doctors, and the doctors didn't heal me. I've been to the doctors, they couldn't prescribe anything to help me. Now, Jesus, I'm coming to you. So you know how, why a lot of people end up in church? Because they've gone elsewhere and found that it didn't heal didn't help and they came to the house of God and they reached for the hem of his garment and they touched him and when he when she touched him that issue was dried up she had persistent faith Jesus said woman thy faith has made you whole that's what he said to her go and be healed of your disease amen she was persistent and I believe it was for Jairus the preacher that had hold of his hand whose little girl was dying Stopped him. Oh, I love the story. Mm. When you persistently pray and fast, it breaks the forces of resistance that have been operating in your life. Some of you, you've walked and hit a wall, and you've walked and hit a wall, you've walked and hit a wall. You, walk, you, you, you applied for a job, didn't get it, and you quit. Well, I guess I don't. Keep applying. Be persistent. Stay out. to drive a certain vehicle. A TRX Dodge 704 horsepower truck. For years. I was at a Dodge dealer Monday. I saw it sitting out there. I want to drive that truck. Finally, they said, okay. But they gave me the key the truck a light popped up on the screen Leon no joy ride I took them keys when my son Josiah we sat down cranked that truck felt like the earth rattled I said Pastor Joseph a picture of me in that truck and he said oh no you didn't now look it's a hundred thirty thousand dollar truck oh no I didn't but I can still drive it went out on that thing. 60 mile an hour. I sheared down on it. It broke loose. The joy of Jesus came all over me. Got down to the stop sign. I turned the thing around, looked at my son Joe's side. He grinned at me. I saw a button that said launch. When's the last time you were in a vehicle and saw a button that said launch? Not lunch, but launch. I looked over at my boy, and he looked at me. We smiling at one another. I'm on the freeway. I, I hit that button. When I hit the button, a light flashed on the windshield. It said, unable to launch due to too few miles. I have no idea what that meant. All I know is I pulled back in the dealership, gave it over to the general manager, I looked at him and I said, that launch button don't work. He said, you didn't hit that button. Oh, yes, I did. I may not can buy it, but I'd sure like to launch it. Finally, persistence paid off. I got to drive one. Got it out. Pretty much out of my system. What you been praying for? Who you been praying for? Giving up on it? Persistent. Persistent. There's that little dog that gave me this sermon. 
He is so persistent. We put him outside to go do what he need to do. And it won't be but a few minutes later, you'll hear <laughs> scratching on the door. Scratching on the door. He won't back in. I want to come in. I want to hang out with y'all. He chose us. I pray to God no other dog chooses us. Resistance. Some of you have felt walls hit you. You felt walls hit you. Our nation's at a place right now of resistance. We got to be persistent. Your faith tells you there's more than this. See, I, I believe in a, in more abundance. Jesus said, "I can have it. I want more abundance." Lift your hand if you believe in the name of Jesus, and that if you stay persistent, God will answer your prayer. You'll pet to Him. He loves you. He loves you, hands in the air, Lord Jesus. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we persistently pursue you, believing in the name of Jesus that our prayers will be heard on high. You love us. No, we're not worthy, but you are. Wrap us in your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise in this house.